All right, the gentlemen from LSU are here, and how we'll do this, we'll uh, hear from the head coach. We'll get some questions for the players, get them out of here, and then we'll finish with the head coach as well. We've got about 10 minutes or so. Um, coach, you're heading to the Sweet 16. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I'm really proud of my guys. Uh, really came out and executed their game plan. I thought Coach Bill Armstrong, who had the scout, did a great job. But these guys right here took the game plan to the floor. We, want, we knew it was going to be a paint game. We wanted to uh, attack the paint and protect the paint. And I thought we did that uh, in the first half, doing a great job pushing it in transition, Trey did, and Sky, and, and then Nas, uh, you know, we played inside, outside. Uh, but uh, second half, got a little stagnant. Uh, I give credit to Mark. He made a good adjustment there. And, but my guys, uh, these guys made big plays. Great players make great plays, and, you know, we, they made plays. And that's why we're moving on. Thanks, Coach. Let's get some questions for players. We'll start here on the front left, and, we'll, er, and then we'll go to, the, to you next. Yes. Go ahead, front row. Uh, easy question to ask uh, for Tremont. Just describe the, the last play. What was was it designed to do? Exactly what the way it happened? Um, pretty much hold the ball, take the last shot, and not shoot the ball too quick, uh, so that they wouldn't have a chance to go down the other end and put up a shot. So uh, Coach Benford and coaching staff, they and actually my teammates, they said they wanted me to take the shot. So um, we just held the ball out. Now it's came and set a screen, and I made a play. Let's go here in the front on the right. Uh, Gene Fournette from the Times Union. Uh, Tremont, can you just describe uh, the feeling of being able to do that in that moment? And where exactly were you on the dog pile near the bench afterwards? And just what that, what that feels like? Cause you don't see a whole lot of dog piles in basketball. Yeah, um, well, I was in the bottom of the, of the dog pile. And just the feeling, um, it feels amazing uh, to have a great support system behind me, my teammates, my coaching staff, and all the fans that were here to give me the confidence to, to go out and make a play like that is a very humbling feeling, and I'm going to continue to do everything I can to help this team win and just keep pushing for my guys. Let's go on the left side and then the very back. Uh, Tony, if I could ask you, what was, I'm over here, um, what was the, what went into the choice of having Trey be the guy in that last possession there? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a play, you know, that we run. You know, uh, we, we, we run it a few times uh, during the year. And uh, we knew a minute against the man in zone, especially against that 3-2, you know, we, we had to do a great job of screening that, that top guy of the 3-2. And uh, told, we told Nas, uh, whoever's up there, if it's man in zone, just screen that guy and just put a body on him. And Nas did a great job. And Trey, you know, great players, made great plays. He made a great play. Let's go, uh, who's next? In the very back, please. And then we'll go up here next. And we'll go down here after that. Wayne Viner with Turp Talk. Nas, can you talk about your battle today with uh, Fernando and Sticks and what your relationship is with those guys off the court? Um, uh, Fernando, he's huge. Uh, my own game plan was really to try to get him off the glass. I mean, if, if I don't get the rebound, at least one of my teammates will. And I mean, He's one big guy. He's, it was really hard. Um, for, uh, and uh, Sticks, he's a tremendous player. Uh, you know, we've played together, we played together, played against each other since six, seventh grade. So, I mean, I've known him for a while. Um, he's, he, he played a, a great battle today, and I give it up, props to both of them. Let's go here on the right side. Yes, sir. Tony, Adam Zagoria. Um, just with everything this team's been through, can you just talk a little bit about what this means for you personally and, and for the team to get to a Sweet 16 here after all this? Well, Adam, it's huge uh, for these guys. They're the ones that pay the price. They've been through a lot. Uh, we know the story of adversity that these guys have gone through. Uh, you, know, at the, at the, you know, losing, uh, obviously, uh, Wade at the beginning of the year we started, and then obviously with Coach not being here with us. But I give it to these guys. They've taken ownership of this team. It's about these guys. These three guys here and the rest of those guys, uh, they trust each other. They respect each other. Uh, they love each other. And when you have a team like that, hey, you have a chance to win games. And that's why we're able to keep moving on. Final questions for the players here. Yeah. Um, Coach Calipari was mentioning the reason why the SEC got so many teams and was doing so well is because of the number of close games everybody seemed to be involved in. You guys had seven overtime games this year. You had this game. Is there any end of game situation or any second half situation at this point that you guys feel like you can't handle? No. Uh, I wouldn't say so. You know, we prepare for it. Uh, the coaches do a great job of putting us in adverse situations in practice with the six minute games that we do. And we'll start the six minutes down seven. And uh, usually when it applies to the game, we're not in that type of situation or it's not as bad. So we feel like, you know, we're prepared for it and we can, uh, you know, figure out a way to win. And we've been able to do that this year. 
Final question for the players here on the front. Uh, uh, Gene Fournette from the Times Union. Questions for Naz. All the highlights, when this tournament is over and they play the one shining moment, is probably going to show the move Tremont made to the basket to win the game. May not necessarily remember that Skyler made two free throws, knocked down a three. Could you t and he's the guy that I hear is sort of the calming guy on this team. Can you talk about the five points that he scored, the two free throws plus the three ball that kind of set the tone for what happened at the end? I mean, Scott makes plays like that per usual. So, I mean, for us, it was like something we've seen every day. And, you know, he's very good at it. And, you know, just keeping keep calm is something he does best. And he, um, he keeps the coaching staff calm, the players calm. You know, he's a calm player who can get through adversity and do anything he can do in any moment by doing that. Congratulations to you. We'll continue with the head coach here for just a few more minutes. LSU locker room is open, and we'll go here on the second row on the left. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm on lot, FAMU TV 20 News. Coach Bedford, this is for you. Um, the first half, it seemed like you guys were totally in control offensively. Uh, all of your plays and sets were going through. And in the second half, they threw the zone at you. So how difficult was that to keep you guys composure and take good shots down the stretch? Well, you know, I thought we did execute. These guys did a great job of, uh, like I said, Coach Bill Armstrong had the scout, and he did a great job of preparing those guys at the scout report. And we wanted to attack the paint, like I said earlier, and we wanted to push it in transition. But the problem with pushing in transition, we had to get rebounds, and those guys are pretty, pretty tough to keep off the glass. But when we were able to do that, Trey was able to get a great push, and uh, we were able to get some easy baskets in transition. So we were able to extend the lead. But I give Mark, he made a great adjustment. We knew they were going to run a 3-2, and we had worked on it. But, uh, you know, when you don't have but a day to prepare, it's tough. And uh, you got to make shots. At the end of the day, when, I don't care what zone, you, you got to make shots. But uh, we made a couple adjustments, and Skyler made, made some plays for us. Third row of the aisle. Yes, sir. Tony, when, when uh, they called the tech on Mark, and you get two foul shots, you go up 15. And I guess a team can go in two ways. Yeah. But Maryland seemed to make that a turning point for them. Uh, and is it yeah. interesting how that can that can work no, sometimes? No, I've been doing this 28 years at this level. I've seen it work, you know, it, it, but they did a good job uh, of, uh, again, he changed his defense because they couldn't guard as a man. You know, my guys were, you know, really executing. But I thought uh, when they made the change, we, we got stagnant, did make shots, and they made shots and, and, and did a good job. So I give, I, give, I give Maryland credit. Far left side, Coach. Tony, just getting back to that, when they went to that zone, you went, you had a pretty good stretch there where you guys were just settling for, for yeah, deep yeah. balls there. And there were a couple of timeouts in that stretch. Are you trying to hammer it home in that, yeah. you know, at the bench there? Yeah, the good question. Because the thing I told them, guys, even men or zone, because we knew we talked about it before game, uh, if they run, I don't care if it's men or zone, the 3-2, we still want to attack the paint, attack the paint. And I thought we got away from it. Our movement wasn't very good. We called a couple of plays out of the timeout and scored. But then I thought sometimes we, we settled too much. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, we, uh, you know, we, you got to make shots. And we made the big one at the end. Time for a few more. We'll go front left. Tony, uh, I think you only had six in the second half. But overall, you ought to score them 26-13 off the bench. Uh, just talk about the, the advantage that, that your bench gave you today. Well, we have eight starters. I mean, I think we had the best eight players in the country when you start you watch us play. I mean, we have eight stars. All those guys have been in the starting lineup all year. They've all made plays and really contributed. You bring him at Williams off to – he can start for anybody in the country. Darius Days can start for anybody in the country. Javante Smart. So, we got eight starters. And so, uh, all those guys can make plays. I told them to be ready. I knew Darius would play well. He didn't, uh, he didn't play as we, – we didn't play him – it was our fault we didn't play him as much against Yale. We should have played him more. But I told him to be ready. And he bounced back and, and being here in Florida, did a great job in front of his family. Time for two more. We'll start here on the right and then here on the aisle. Tony, can you just talk about the personalities on this team? Obviously, two big closers. You saw there down the stretch with Skyler yeah. before that and Tremont now. Well, well, I'll tell you what. I think Skyler Mays is one of the most underrated players in the country. You know, we know what he's, he does in the classroom, 4.0 student, uh, scholar athlete. But anyway, he's a heck of a player, too. I think people, because he's so smart, people forget how good a basketball player he is. But he made some huge plays. And, and for, to do that, you know, Wade Sims was like a brother to him. Those guys grew up, and he's, uh, you know, I know he's, he's Wade is watching over us. But and then Trey Munn's just a player. I mean, he's a guy that make plays. And I don't know how he got through the, uh, that shot over all those big guys in there, but he made it. And, uh you know, the basketball guys were, was watching over us today. Final question on the aisle, yes. Tony, five and two in overtime games, and two of the victories were against tournament teams. One of the losses, he split with Florida, who's a tournament team. One of the losses to FSU, who's a tournament team. What makes these kids so tough at the end of the game? That's a, that's a great question. We, you know, and, and, and we went, uh, you know, five and one in the league. You know, we played six overtime in the SEC, the best league in the country, in my opinion. And, and I think what it is is a closeness of this group. 
Okay, they're not afraid of the moment. We sit there in the huddle. We knew a three-minute game. We weren't, you know, playing as well as we needed to. And the scholars just say, hey, Coach, Coach, so we're gonna be okay. We're gonna win this game. We're gonna win this game. And so I just think that these guys, you know, we got we got multiple guys that can make plays off the bounce. Then you got knives that can score inside. So when you got guys that can make plays and believe they can go make a play any time, regardless of the situation, it makes the job easier as a coach. And, and you know, you have a chance to win get close games. Coach, congrats. Thank you. All right, thank you guys.